Hello, I'm Ray Abbas, and I work with the Resilient Families Program. In today's topic, we're going to discuss uh, putting together a cover letter. One of the common themes that we've had um, throughout some of our some of our job clubs is getting an advantage over those um, that you're competing with for positions. And one of the ways that you can do that is by putting together a cover letter for any resumes that, that you send out. So um, anytime that a job requires you to put together a resume, um, it would be highly encouraged for you to also put together a cover letter. So we're gonna talk about um, the parts of a cover letter and some of the purposes. Um, so here we go. What are the purposes of a cover letter? Well, the, the primary purpose is to interest the employer in reading your resume. Generally speaking, if you're sending a cover letter with a resume, they're looking at that cover letter first. So if they look at that cover letter and it gives them information that they're not really interested in, they might not continue on to looking at your resume. Um, second point, second purpose is to tie together your education, experience, and skills to the job requirements that you're applying for. If you listen to our, um, our recording of the resume writing, one of the things that we discussed was utilizing the job description as a way to put together a section of your resume. Well, this is a, this is kind of similar. You know, if you look at the job requirements that 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 are posted, part of the purpose of the cover letter is to show and illustrate how your education, experience, and skills match what um, what they what they have and what they need. Um, and to that point, um, the third purpose is just to show that you're a good fit for the company, just to wrap it all up and, and give them a reason why um, that you'd be the best candidate for the position. Um, and then lastly, to explain any gaps in employment. You know, when you're doing, a, when, you, when you have a resume and it has some gaps in it, well, the gaps, there aren't reasons for the gaps when when an employer is just looking at your resume so the the cover letter is a way to explain some of those gaps in your in your resume all right so just a couple of um just a couple of stats here um 86 percent of executives said that cover letters are valuable when evaluating job candidates so obviously um, that's really high. So um, it gives them an opportunity to um, see how you express yourself in a, in a way other than just your, um, just your resume. Um, eight out of 10 hiring managers said it is common to receive electronic resumes accompanied by cover letters. Okay, so primarily, and I, I guess ideally, if you're emailing a resume to someone, you can email a cover letter just as well. So you're, you're attaching that resume, you could do the same with attaching, um, with attaching a cover letter. Now, I see this as well, um, just kind of in, in my experience as, as someone who interviews folks, sometimes, you might attach the resume, but the body of your email might be the actual cover letter. And I think that's, I think that's okay too, um, because in this day and age, you know, so much of it is being done electronically. You know, you, you might attach the resume, but the body of the email might just simply be um, the, the cover letter. All right. Um, this is a, just a uh, an example. I know it's probably a little bit difficult to see, but this is an example of 
some of the sections of a, of a cover letter. And I would just say, I think sometimes people get really intimidated by putting together a cover letter, but really a, a cover letter could be effective with basically just three paragraphs. The first one, the middle one, and some type of closing, um, you know, closing paragraph. And we're gonna talk about some of these sections, but, you know, I, I think sometimes when we, when I discuss cover letters, people feel like, you know, oh, I'm, you know, it feels like, feels like English class all over again, and they're trying to write, you know, a term paper or something like that. Um, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be that complicated, so. All right, well, let's, um, let's move on to the next. Okay, so we have a couple of, uh, we're just gonna talk about some of the cover letter sections. Okay, so briefly, um, date and contact information, a greeting, the opening paragraph, the middle, or um, I would say the middle paragraph, and then kind of a closing paragraph, and then just kind of signing off. All right, so let's jump in here. Okay, so contact and information um, is pretty straightforward. I would say this as a tip. If you use the same format at the top for your contact information as your resume, so whatever the top of your resume looks like, how, you've, how you have shown your name and phone number and address on the top of your resume might be a good way to duplicate that um, and make it identical on the top of your cover letter. It just makes things look more uniform. Um, so I would, I, I, that's just kind of a tip um, that I would suggest. Um, otherwise it's just, you know, your basic, your basic information, name, address, home, you know, cell phone number and email address. Okay, so the opening section is the greeting and opening section. First thing, let me say something about the greeting. If you don't know exactly who you're writing the cover letter to, I would say, I would do something like Dear Human Resources or, you know, Dear Hiring Manager, something like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use to whom it may concern. Um, that just is, that's overly generic. Um, I know that, you know, if you don't know who exactly you're writing to, if you're saying Dear Human Resources, um, that's a little, that is obviously a little generic, but at least you're addressing a department. So I would suggest that you do it, do it that way rather than putting to whom it may concern. Um, so in the opening paragraph, you're explaining to the recipient why you're writing. And that is simply saying, I am responding to your warehouse worker um, position that you posted on indeed.com. I mean, that is as basic as the first paragraph really is. You're really just explaining that you're interested in, a, in the position, naming what position it is, and how you, um, how you found the ad. You know, where, where was the ad? Was it indeed.com? Was it on um, Jobs for TN? Was it on some other job bank? Um, and then the last point here is, you know, to mention if you were referred by another employee. So if, if an employee at the, at the business suggested you apply because they knew there was a certain position open, you know, certainly in that, that opening sentence or two, that you would, you know, you would refer back to, you know, that such and such an employee suggested um, that you might that you might apply and, and that you're interested in the position. Okay, so basically the middle paragraph is um, just a way to describe 
how your qualifications match the position. One of the things, as I mentioned earlier, that you may want to do is, you know, if you're looking at their job description, you are touching on some of the things that they mentioned in their job description. You're mentioning that as to how you're qualified and to the second bullet here, um, what you can what you can offer them in terms of what they need and what you can provide. So, you know, just kind of an example, you know, if they if they have a job description that talks about, you know, the ability to utilize different types of uh, office equipment, being able to type a certain number of words a minute, um, you know, somebody with, you know, three years of customer service experience, you know, whatever, whatever needs that they are expressing in their job description is the type of wording, the types of, of items and skills that you would mention because you can, you can offer a way for them to meet those needs, to fill those needs. Um, the third bullet talks about, um, you, you know, you're, you're mentioning your, your, some of the same things from your resume, but don't just repeat your resume. Um, I, I would use, use it as a way to expand on some things in your resume that you can't go into as much detail. And so, you know, maybe if there's certain projects or certain roles that maybe you didn't mention in your resume that you would mention, um, that you could mention in your cover letter. Another thing that I think is really important is that if you, you know, again, if you listen to our resume uh, workshop, you know, in your resume, you may only go back eight to 10 to 12 years or so, you're not going all the way back in your resume. Well, let's say, for example, you um, you did some warehouse work several years ago and it's not on your resume because it's so far back. Well, this might be an opportunity in your cover letter to mention some experience that you had doing some warehouse work. Um, because it's not, it may not be on your resume because it was so far, um, so far long ago, but your cover letter is an opportunity to, um, to illustrate and express some of that, that work that you've done if it relates to one of the jobs that you're applying for now. Um, and then lastly, you know, explain why you might make the best candidate for the position uh, and will be a good employee for the company. And this is where, you know, people often talk about, you know, that, um, you know, their dedication and loyalty um, to their employers and then mentioning, you know, again, some of those types of things that you can provide to a company that, that they are, are expressing a need for. Um, what I might suggest is, if, you, if you're not familiar with the company that you're applying for, that you certainly should consider doing some research on the internet about them. So you know some of what they do, so you can address some of their needs. Um, okay, so one last point is, again, I would see these paragraphs as really you know, three or four, three or four sentences, really even the, the first paragraph is probably gonna be two sentences. The, the middle paragraph is probably more like, um, is more like the, excuse me, the, the beginning paragraph is more uh, like two sentences, but when you get to the middle, it's it's looking more like 
um, you know, you're looking at three, four, five sentences. So I don't want you to think of it as, again, something that's really long and intimidating. And then in the closing, essentially what you're doing is just thanking the hiring manager for their time and for them considering you um, for the position. Um, you may want to go ahead and say in, in that closing paragraph that you know, you'd like to discuss with them um, a follow-up, you know, a an opportunity to talk or, you know, just saying, you know, that you would really be interested in, um, in coming in for an interview. And, and so again, you know, that last, that last paragraph, you know, you're looking at, you know, two sentences or so. You're basically just th thanking them for their time and for them considering your application and saying, you know, that you'd be, um, you know, that you'd be excited for the opportunity to, to meet with them and discuss the position further. Okay, so a couple of final, um, final tips, um, you know, keep it clear and concise, you know, don't go into um, too much detail. Again, you know, we're looking at, you know, the middle paragraph, um, you know, being, you know, three to four to five sentences, um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, don't you, you know, don't be too casual, make sure you're using professional language. Um, you know, uh, we do so much emailing and texting sometimes when it comes to, um, to actually writing something, you know, we, we tend to move towards that really casual language. So, so try not to, to get, um, to get too, too casual. You're, you're looking at just trying to be very professional in, in what you're, um, and what you're trying to express. Um, I would suggest that, you know, you have someone that can proofread it. Um, sometimes, you know, we look at something and it looks, it looks good. It's, we kind of feel like we know what it is and what it says, but when someone else looks at it, they might say, oh, you know, I'm not really sure about that. That doesn't, you know, I'm not sure what you're trying to say right there. So sometimes it's really helpful to, to let someone else um, take a look at it. Um, I mentioned this earlier, you know, research the company to see what you can, um, what you can learn about th them if you don't know anything about it. So you can um, make sure that you can tie in what you, what you can offer to them with their company and some of their the needs that they have and so um you know researching the company is uh can be really really helpful um and then the last thing is you can create a template to reuse but make sure to tailor um to tailor your resume to each employer that you reach out to i would say that even with the cover letter you're doing some tailoring, as we've said, about, about matching what the company needs with what you can offer. But the good thing about, you know, again, not being too intimidated by the idea of doing a cover letter is that once you kind of have that template of, of the, the initial paragraph and the middle paragraph and the final paragraph, you're really just, inserting what is pertinent, what is important to the job you're applying for. So you're not completely recreating every one of these paragraphs every time you have to do a cover letter. You're really just inserting, okay, how, how did I learn about this position? Well, you know, for this position, I learned it um, from Indeed. Um, so I'm going to have, you know, so I have to change this part. You know, so you're 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 gonna have a template. Once you do the very first cover letter, you're gonna have a template, and then really after that, what you're gonna do is being is just changing some of the key a couple of the key parts. But it's not like you're starting from scratch every time. So so keep that in mind. I hope that's another way for you to not feel too intimidated by by doing a cover letter. Um, 
And then the, the last reason why I would hope that you wouldn't be too intimidated to do a cover letter is because Resilient Families is here to help you. So if you're, if you're gonna, if you're gonna try to do a cover letter, you, you know, you find a position and you really want it and it's asking you for a resume. And so you're doing, you're putting that resume together and now you need a cover letter also, reach out to your, your case manager and let them know that you might need some help. Um, and then they, that way they can do whatever they can to, um, to help. So, all right, well, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I was gonna mention one um, really important job lead that, um, that we've recently received. Um, so it is October the 13th as I'm recording this. And so if you're listening to this, you know, in that, you know, relatively close to that time frame, I wanna let you know that CVS Health is hiring 200 work from home positions in Knoxville. So um, it pays between 15 and $16 an hour, depending on your, um, depending on your experience. And so I ask that if this is something that you're interested in, call your case manager, text them, email them, somehow reach out to them and ask them how to apply for one of the CVS Health stay at home, uh, you know, work from home positions. So um, could be a great opportunity um, for you. All right, well, I hope you, um, hope this has been helpful and um, we are at the end. I hope to um, be able to get back with all of you again sometime soon. Thanks.